So I also would like to uh, thank the organizers for inviting me here uh, to present our work. This is the first time in Argentina and I'm very excited and impressed and enchanted by this country. Uh, I would like to um, tell you something about working at the physical limit. There are cells that can detect the binding of a single molecule. Um, and one of these uh, cells are sperm, uh, sea urchin sperm. And this is a very fascinating uh, system. And I will, uh, to answer this uh, question completely, in quantitative terms, you have to elucidate the chemotactic signaling pathway. You need to know all the molecules that are involved in uh, signaling. Secondly, uh, the, <coughs> the sperm swim with their flagellar bead, and we need a complete 3D construction, reconstruction of the flagellar bead and the swimming behavior. And finally, uh, we need to understand the navigation strategy. Which strategy do they use in order to uh, uh, find uh, the source of uh, the, uh, the chemical, the egg? Now, in recent years, we, um, in, in my first slide, I will uh, briefly introduce you to this. The egg uh, produces and releases uh, chemical factors called chemoattractant, and they <coughs> form a chemical gradient uh, around the egg. And this chemical gradient for the sperm provides the cues in order to, to navigate and find the source. And sea urchin sperm, when captured in, in, in a shallow recording chamber, they swim in very regular uh, circles. And when you apply a chemical gradient, uh, these uh, uh, circles drift. So they move uh, on drifting circles, and these drifting circles are characterized by alternating uh, uh, turns of high curvature and low curvature. So there are turns and runs and turns and runs. And um, at, um, in, at rest, the flagellar bead is slightly asymmetric, and therefore the sperm swim in circles. Now, when the calcium concentration rises, the flagellar bead gets asymmetric, and they make a turn. And when the calcium concentration goes down, um, the uh, flagellar bead becomes more symmetric, and they run on a straight swimming path. So calcium oscillations in the flagellum control the asymmetry of the bead, and thereby the swimming path. Now, how do we study this? Um, we study this by using uh, or synthesizing various chemicals. For example, we used caged, uh, uh, we synthesized caged chemoattractants and caged uh, cyclic GMP, which is an intracellular messenger, which I will tell you later on. The uh, chemoattractant for C. urchin sperm is a small peptide shown here. It consists of uh, 14 amino acids, and we modify, coval covalently modify this uh, chemoattractant so that it is not recognized by the sperm. And then with a flash of light, we release the protecting caging group. We release uh, the, this peptide called RESAC, and thereby we can rapidly stimulate uh, the, the sperm, and also we can uh, sculpture rapidly in milliseconds a chemical gradient in quantitative terms uh, and follow uh, the, the sperm swing in this gradient. Now, um, in, in my next, uh, it has been known for many years, that for almost 30 years, that calcium controls the flagellar bead and that High calcium induces high asymmetry and low calcium low asymmetry, and that makes these alternating terms. Now, I sh will show you a movie uh, that uh, casts doubt on, on this uh, hypothesis. And what we do is we load our sperm with a calcium sensitive dye, and we load it uh, with cage cyclic GMP, and then we initiate the motility and uh, the cellular signaling by a, a flash of light. And this is shown here. 
So sperm swim in circles on the left, and then there is a flash of light, and they make these alternating runs and turns and runs and turns and runs. Now you see that the path curvature oscillates, shown here on the right. So there are these oscillatory increases in the curvature of the trajectory, and this gives rise to these turns and runs, turns and runs. And simultaneously, now we record the calcium concentration. And you will see that the calcium concentration does not correlate at all with the curvature. For example, the calcium concentration here is, is high, whereas the, the curvature is already very low. So somehow these calcium oscillations trigger uh, these changes in curvature, but the, 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 the calcium concentration value is totally unrelated uh, to, to the curvature. However, when you do the time derivative of the calcium concept, changes in calcium concentration, show here in the lower uh, panel in red and the in violet is uh, the curvature, they perfectly coincide. So sperm can do high school calculus. They don't respond to, to the absolute value of the calcium concentration, but they respond to the dynamics of the changes in calcium concentration exactly to the time derivative of uh, calcium. It's very surprising. Now, what is the signaling pathway that controls these calcium uh, dynamics and produces these calcium signals? In recent years, uh, we have elucidated uh, uh, the, uh, this uh, pathway. So it's a story about one receptor, one chemoattractant receptor and three ion channels. And uh, the, the chemoattractant receptor is a guanylide cyclase that binds the peptide and then uh, synthesizes cyclic GMP. The cyclic GMP then binds to a potassium selective cyclic nucleotide, a gated channel that opens, that is closed at rest and opens, and potassium ions uh, leave the cell, and thereby the cell hyperpolarizes. That is very surprising. Most cells sit at about, at rest at about minus 70 millivolts or so. Now sperm have a resting potential of about minus 40 millivolts, and in response to stimulation, they hyperpolarize rather than depolarize. And this depolarization affects two other channels. Uh, one are these um, so-called hyperpolarization and, um, and cyclic nucleotide gated channels. And these are weakly uh, potassium selective ion channels and at physiological concentrations, they carry an invert current and thereby depolarizing the cell again. And these so-called HCN channels are um, in, in our brain and they uh, make the pacing of our heart and therefore they're also called pacemaker channel. And the, the pacemaker channel, uh, the, the first pacemaker channel discovered and cloned was in sea urchin sperm, very surprising. And then later on it was uh, discovered then in, 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 uh, in the heart and in the brain, I mean the genes. And then, uh, Upon this uh, depolarization, voltage activated calcium channels open and calcium flows into the cell. Now, uh, this is a model and I want to show you the experiments that support uh, this model. Um, first of all, we need uh, to, to record the changes in electrical potential and sperm are very hard to patch them, leaving alone free motile sperm. In, in order to uh, record electrically from sperm, we resorted to so-called voltage-sensitive dyes. Dye 8 ANEPS is one of them. Uh, they, it's an electrochromic dye. It's fast. It uh, stains the plasma membrane and uh, rapidly partitions in, in, in into the membrane. And these molecules are charged. And uh, when you apply an electric field, uh, the charge redistributes, reorients, and thereby the emission spectrum is changed either to the shifted to the right or to the left, depending on the change of, of the voltage. 
and you can record at the flanks <coughs> of this emission spectrum and thereby get a, a ratio imaging or, or ratio spectroscopy. And to our surprise at that time, we recorded very rapid uh, changes in uh, uh, voltage and hyperpolarization, thereby show uh, that, that uh, uh, the, the sperm hyperpolarize. Now, how, how, do, how are these calcium channels open? Well, we simultaneously recorded, and uh, this is shown here in black, the voltage, these are the, down, uh, the, the uh, downward uh, signals, and in red, the calcium uh, uh, signals. And the calcium signals are very delayed. We observe delays up to 600 milliseconds. And this is uh, uh, caused by the, the fact that these cells first have to hyperpolarize, and then when they depolarize again, the calcium channels open and you can uh, record a calcium signal. Now I told you that <coughs> these sperm are very sensitive and that they can register and respond to si the binding of a single molecule of the chemoattractant. And this I want to show you uh, in the next slide. Here you see uh, a calcium signal and what we do is we first deliver with a flash uh, about 620 femtomolar of the chemotractant. Not nanomolar, not picomolar, femtomolar. And 620 femtomolar, we deliver one, on average, one molecule per sperm. And then a few milliseconds later, 50, 30, 100 milliseconds later, we deliver a, a second flash. And on the right, you see the calcium signal. The blue signal is the calcium response <coughs> to the binding of a single molecule of chemoattractant. And then the, the black, which you don't see because it's behind the yellow and the uh, 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 red signal, you observe the signal that is caused by the absorption of two molecules of the chemoattractant. And then what we do is we deliver during this delay two single molecules at different time intervals. And these are the uh, green and the red signals. So these uh, sperm are perfectly integrate within a sampling time, a counting time of about two to 600 milliseconds, every single molecule, and then respond. So uh, they are mathematically rather talented, not only that they can uh, do high school mathematics, you know, make a time derivative of a calcium signal, but they also can count uh, molecules. And thereby we also proved there, there are two different ways how you can uh, sample a gradient. You can make a spatial comparison. You can ask what is in front and at the end of a cell and compare these two signals and when the front signal is larger, the cell knows, okay, here is, gets life better. Uh, but you can also do a temporal sampling. So you can move around and make two samples within a, a time period, delta T, and then decide whether this, uh, the, the chemotractin concentration increases or not. Now this experiment shows that uh, sperm do temporal sampling of, um, of the chemoattractant. Now there is through, uh, cruci we wanna understand this uh, single molecule uh, event in uh, quantitative terms and there's three crucial questions to answer. One is this guanylate cyclase that syn synthesizes cyclic GMP, what is the turnover? So how many cyclic GMP molecules are synthesized per second per receptor? And secondly, and this is quite a different question, how many cyclic GMP molecules are required for a response? It may be different. And finally, is this cyclic nucleotide gated channel sufficiently sensitive to cyclic GMP? So we first, uh, with a, a, a very rapid quench flow techniques, we measured in, uh, with a time resolution of a few milliseconds the increase in cyclic GMP and it dramatically increases by uh, up to 80 fold by stimulation with the chemoattractant and it's a, a, a transient signal first increases and it goes down again. 
and the increase is due to the synthesis of cyclic GNP and the decrease due to the hydrolysis by a phosphodiesterase. Now, when we block the phosphodiesterase uh, sensitivity, uh, the transient signal uh, goes into a plateau and from the slope here, so we abolish hydrolysis and from the slope of this rise of cyclic GMP, we can determine the number of cyclic GMP molecules synthesized by the grunilide cyclase and these are 20 cyclic GMP molecules. Now, how many mo the next question is how, how many molecules do we really need? So for this, to answer this question, we synthesized a caged form of cyclic GMP, this DEACM caged. And the cyclic GMP is modified, uh, the, the, the blue is the cyclic G and the cage is the yellow, is modified by a coumarill residue. And this coumarill residue is non-fluorescent, but when it's released by light, released as a coumarill alcohol, it becomes highly fluorescent and thereby we can uh, calibrate it and know how many cyclic GMP molecules we release in a cell. And uh, th this experiment is shown in the next slide. The, um, the green uh, 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 trace is the calcium signal evoked by 500 femtomolar of RISAC, so by the binding of a single molecule of RISAC. And the other signals are uh, uh, caused by the release of different amounts of cyclic GMP inside a cell. And the red signal and the green signal have a similar ampl amplitude. And from this, we can calculate that we uh, release or we need about 45 molecules of cyclic GMP to uh, um, produce such a single molecule response. Now, for us, working on cyclic nucleotide gated for cyclic nucleotide gated channels for more than 20 years or so, this was bad news. Uh, because uh, the, 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 the 45 molecules uh, give it uh, a concentration of 45 nanomolar, the, the volume of the flagellum is about 1.5 femtoliters. But the sensitivity of all CNG channels that we know so far is between three and uh, 50 micromolar. So a thousand fold less sensitive that we would require uh, to, to respond to 45 molecules of cyclic GMP. So there was no way out then uh, to clone this channel and it was a big surprise. Usually um, um, the, the cyclic nucleotide gated channels are formed of tetramers and formed of four different uh, subunits. Uh, but this uh, uh, cyclic nucleotide gated channel from sea urchin is a large polypeptide that consists of four uh, uh, homologous repeats. And actually that is very reminiscent of the structure of sodium, voltage dependent sodium and calcium channel. It has the canonical uh, motif for uh, potassium selective channel, G, Y, G, D in the POR motif, and it has at the and at the C terminus, a uh, hundred amino acid long domain that um, that uh, binds the uh, cyclic uh, GMP and AMP. So uh, basically, this channel is an evolutionary chimera between voltage-dependent sodium and calcium channel, potassium channels, and cyclic nucleotide channels. Now we heterologously expressed this channel and we showed that it's an uh, invert rectifier and uh, that it has a, a reversal potential of uh, minus 80 millivolt consistent with potassium selective channel. But what was more important, we excised this piece of membrane and superfused it with different concentration of cyclic GMP and recorded the dose response curve. And to our relief and uh, uh, astonishment, this uh, channel is very sensitive to cyclic GMP, a thousand volt more sensitive than any other channel that we know of. Namely, it has a K 